And now we're going to be moving on to another very cool area of e-commerce tech that's going to help you improve your marketing because we're going to be joined in just a second or two um, by John Tucker from Helpflow. Um, who is going to be taking us through some really interesting strategic angles to live chat. And John, if you've not come across John before, he is the founder and CEO at Helpflow, which is a done for you live chat service. John always brings a ton of value to his sessions. I always learn a lot, I know. So I'm really looking forward to finding out the latest tips and tricks to increase those conversions. So let's bring John up here. Hello, John. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, Chloe. How are you doing? I'm good. Great to see you again. And awesome. um, great to have you here. So shall I let you you take our um, take our audience through the marvelous things you've got to share? Definitely. I hope I hope they're marvelous for everybody. Uh, <laughs> super, super excited uh, to dig in. Um, so what I'm going to be talking about is is really how to predict and save abandons uh, with live chat. A lot of people are familiar with what live chat is, um, but I really want to be able to dig into um, how it plays a role in predicting if somebody's going to abandon and then saving those people before they actually leave. Um, you know, there's tons and tons of cart recovery tactics out there. You should be using all of them because it's very low hanging fruit. Um, but the majority of them are all focused on saving somebody to win them back after they leave email sequence, SMS, retargeting ads, all those things. Uh, what we're gonna be talking about is how to predict that somebody is going to abandon and save them before they bail. Um, but to preface this, I really wanna start with why growth uh, in e-com is, is so, so tough, um, because that really sets the stage for what we're gonna go into. If you're doing any sort of uh, significant growth, paid traffic is going to be part of the game. Uh, and traffic is expensive. It's expensive to make it work. Uh, it's expensive even when it does work. You got to have a really healthy back end as far as additional profit to, to make a lot of money with it. Um, and it's just expensive. Traffic is expensive. But if you look at abandons, abandons are a huge part of what makes traffic really expensive. 50% um, of the people that start the checkout process will end up abandoning. Um, and so that means for you know every 100 people that start the checkout process, 50 of them are gonna bail, right? And some of those are gonna uh, abandon really, really deep in the checkout process. I'm talking about the payment page, shipping page, all those things. Um, and the issue, kind of what I touched on at the beginning is the normal checkout recovery, email, SMS methods, all that type of stuff. Um, they don't, uh, they don't work effectively enough because they're targeting people that already left. But like I mentioned, if you can predict these abandons before they happen, even before the person starts to think about abandoning, you can save a ton of those sales. And so what I'm going to do for this session, um, because I wanted to have like hard data to really dig into um is i'm going to go through a case study so you guys can really see like how significant the the abandoned problem is um and you know tactical ways um of how to save those abandons so this particular store is a makeup and skincare score store um they do 750 grand a month and i'm purposely using a pretty darn big site so that you can be comfortable uh, knowing that the ratios I'm gonna share, the percentage of abandons, the percentage of recovers, all those types of things, um, I want you to be confident in those ratios. If I'm using a store that does 25K a month, those numbers are gonna swing so much. Um, so you gotta use big numbers, um, at least when you're looking at this for, for ratios. So um, if you don't do 750K a month, you will still get a lot of value from uh, implementing these tactics. I just wanted to use big data here. Um, overall, one other thing I want you to notice here is um, the site performs pretty well already, right? 3.8% conversion rate, $38 average order value, like pretty healthy site, um, even you know revenue side. Um, if you were to exclude the revenue that it's like almost a million dollars a month, still very uh, well performing site. But if you look at their abandons, you can see a different story. There's a, there's a lot of people that abandon. Um, in this particular view, what you're seeing on the top row, 22,235 people a month start the checkout process, but don't end up completing. So 700 plus people every single day, right? Um, it's, it's more than the bottom line that you see. The bottom line is the number of people that actually buy. Um, so 22,000 people a month, uh, start the checkout. And this is based on Google analytics data. I'm reviewing it in this type of view rather than the Shopify view, cause we're going to slice and dice the data a bit. Um, but bottom line, I want you to, to realize like there's a lot of abandons here, but like I mentioned earlier, if you look deeper, the second row here is the number of people that abandon on the payment page. So 6,620 people abandon on the payment page. In this case, it's 30% uh, of their actual abandons. 
And if you run the numbers on that, remember their average order value was, uh, was uh, 38 bucks. Um, it's a quarter million dollars a month of people leaving on the payment page, right? Um, so again, this is a big store. I get it. You're not going to have a quarter million dollars abandoning on the payment page. Um, but around 30% of your abandons are going to be happening on the payment page. Around 50% of the people that start the checkout are going to abandon. And so um, there's a lot of opportunity regardless of your store. And so there's a lot of ways you can try to save these. Again, like you should definitely be using all of these. Um, but if you look at uh, simple abandoned cart emails, um, you should absolutely be using those. Um, I'm going to actually call out uh, later in the session um, some uh, additional things you can do to really supercharge results um, of those campaigns. Um, but either way, you should be doing cart recovery stuff for sure. Retargeting ads, another reason, uh, another way that you're going to be targeting people to come back to the store and complete those purchases. But the issue here is, is none of these address why somebody abandoned, right? Um, they, they are typically going to be some variation of reminder, reminder and a discount, and then a Hail Mary discount over three to five days. So that's kind of like a default uh, flow for some of these sequences. Um, these don't address why someone abandoned. Um, people have questions about, you know, configuration of products, compatibility of products, um, certainty. They want to know that the product's going to be right for them. Um, and so a lot of these things are kind of subjective situations that, you know, really require a conversation to answer. Um, and so you should be using all these cart abandonment strategies or cart recovery strategies, really. Um, but they don't address the core reason why people abandon. And so that brings us to live chat. Live chat can be a really good way to answer these questions. Um, people always think of live chat as a customer service tool. So, you know, order tracking, returns, like all that stuff. Um, but if you do live chat really well, it can be used to drive a ton of conversions, um, not only here in the cart recovery process, but, you know, before um, as people are really engaged in products, I'm going to show you some examples for that. Um, and also technically after people leave the site, again, I'm going to show you how to get a lot better results out of your Clavio sequences um, by integrating live chat there. But looking at this data, right? So going back to the actual data. Um, this particular site, they're losing around 6,000 people per month on the payment page, right? 6,620. They're converting 3.8% of everybody on the site. So all traffic that comes to the site, right? 3.8%. Um, so the question becomes like of the people that are on the payment page, they've made it all the way through. They've put their shipping stuff in there. They figured out what product they want. Um, what percentage of those on the actual credit card screen um, should you be able to convert? And in this case, converting, you know, one in five, 20%, um, definitely doable. I wouldn't want to forecast it much higher than that, but, um, you know, lower than that's not really feasible um, because in this case, they're getting all the way to the end, right? Maybe if this was a super high ticket purchase, it'd be a lower percent, 10%, 15%. Um, but forecasting 20% of people uh, being converted uh, for the ones that are abandoning on payment pages, turns into 50 grand uh, in new revenue per month for this customer. Um, and so what I want you to take away from this is like the scope of the sales you can drive if you get you know really sniper focused with live chat um, is really significant if you get it right. Um, as far as our background, I know Chloe shared a little bit at Helpful, this, this is exactly what we do. You do not need to work with us to drive these results. That's what I'm going to show you today. Um, but what we do is we provide 24 seven live chat teams for over a hundred e-commerce stores. So our team is actually there answering visitors questions and helping them through the purchase process. And at this point, we've done millions of chats. We've driven literally over a hundred million dollars in chat revenue through our efforts. We've been doing this for a long time, over six years. Um, and so we have a lot of experience doing this, but again, you don't have to work with us to drive these results. I want to walk you through tactical stuff you can actually apply with your team right away. So getting into it, um, I'm just doing a quick time check there. Getting into it, live chat, um, really, it should be used throughout the entire site. But there's really three places, um, three big levers that you can pull to really drive uh, a lot of sales with live chat. Um, and so one of those is the checkout process. I touched on that. I'll go a little deeper in a moment. Number two is product and category pages. Um, so I'll dig into that. And number three is your cart abandonment emails using chat along with your cart abandonment emails. I'm going to show you that at the end. Um, so I want to walk you through you know, strategies for each of these. 
So starting with recovering sales in the checkout process. Um, the goal here is really to predict abandons and then engage automatically before they abandon. So I'm not talking about exit intent pop-ups or, or you know anything funky like that. Those they don't work that well anymore, frankly, because people are mentally gone. They've already left. They just haven't got their mouse all the way to the top of the screen. Um, what I'm talking about is looking at the patterns of how people abandon and then basically engaging with them two or three steps before they actually leave. So they, the perfect time is when they don't even start thinking about abandoning, but it's clearly going to happen based on the data. Um, and so some examples of that, um, you know, using this screen here just to call out some examples. Um, if they enter the checkout and then they leave, obviously that's that's a sign of abandoning. They may not have actually left the site, but they're going back to the, the main site, right? Um, uh, a more tactical one is if they're they're slowing down um, or they're stuck on certain parts of the checkout process. So they move very quickly through product selection, very quickly through contact information, and then they start to freeze up on shipping or they start to freeze up on the check uh, payment page. What you're talking about is changes in velocity as somebody moves through. The equivalent of somebody in a brick and mortar store walking around looking super excited. Then they go up and down the same aisle a couple times. Then they get a little bit frustrated. Uh, and you can tell by the look on their face that something's off, right? That's basically what you're trying to do here. Um, and to be clear, um, basically uh, with Shopify specifically, you do need Shopify Plus in order to actually physically chat within the checkout, unless you have a super old version of Shopify, but that's pretty rare. Um, but you need Shopify Plus. With that said, if your numbers shake out the way I'm going to show you in this session, it probably will pay for Shopify Plus all by itself. So um, yes, you need Shopify Plus. You can still technically do uh, some of this when somebody leaves the checkout, um, but I just want to acknowledge that up front. But assuming the numbers um, make sense for your store, this alone will pay for Shopify Plus, and then you'll get all the other benefits. Um, so basically what you're doing here is you're engaging with somebody as they start to slow down, you win, uh, you get a chance to win those sales. And also you're going to get a lot of insights from those conversations that you can use to basically, uh, avoid abandons in the future. So definitely something, uh, to look into. Um, that's the checkout process. I want to, I want to show you, um, something that's uh, a little bit further back from the checkout process. Cause, cause these are things people don't typically think of. Um, what I want to focus on is number two, which is people that, uh, are in product and category pages and basically just highly engaged in the product. They're really interested in the product. They clearly, uh, are, are spending some time considering what they're going to do. Um, but they're not moving into the actual checkout. And so the goal here is with these, these product abandons, get those people to move into the checkout also. And so an example site I'm going to use is Thrive. I've used this in some other sessions. Um, they're not a client, um, but I thought it was an easy business to understand. Um, so pick, picture, you know, someone looking at their makeup and skincare products. Um, this particular site, uh, it has a lot of categories and a, and a reasonably wide range of products. And so you can see that in the, in the top nav or, or looking through the site. But um, when they get here uh, to a category page, think of what they're doing, right? They're gonna, they're gonna filter by various criteria on the left-hand side or color or those types of things, um, but they don't end up moving into an actual product page, right? So uh, what you can do is you can track this by looking at time on page, obviously, like that's pretty, pretty simple, not super effective, frankly, um, but you can track time on page. You can also track scroll depth of how far they've gone into the page. So you can really gauge like how uh, how interested are they in what they're seeing on the page. Um, and technically, you can track inner page activity also. So you can track, um, you know, clicks on the left hand side on that layered navigation. Technically, you can track that with page views. Um, but if you had other things that didn't technically trigger a new URL, you can track that too. So you can track scroll depth, track inner page activity. You can get really nerdy with this stuff in Google Tag Manager. But basically what we're talking about is they're super engaged, but they don't click through to the product. And then you can invite them to chat here and offer help really finding the right product, right? So showing up at that perfect time when, when somebody's starting to look lost. Um, second one though, is if they do get to a product page, uh, they'll be reviewing information, they'll be configuring colors, they'll be basically uh, really evaluating if that's the right product for them, right? And maybe they go to more products. Um, but again, in this case, they don't move into the checkout, right? So basically what I'm doing is I'm looking at each step that leads to a purchase. And if people get stuck on that step, help them move forward with chat, right? So in this particular case, 
you're tracking deep engagement in the product. You're tracking scroll depth. You're talking. Uh, you're tracking. You know, clicks on product images. Um, there might be um, ingredients or allergy stuff um, further down this page. There is an ingredients one. So you're tracking all those types of things. Um, and again, if somebody's super engaged but not moving forward, you invite them to chat. Right. That's basically what I'm talking about. So you can save a lot of sales like this. Going back to the case study, right, the site that we used earlier, so you guys can really see this data. Um, they get about 350,000 visitors per month. That's the top line. Um, the second row that you see is the number of people that view a product, but don't actually move in to the checkout process, right? So there's some engagement, um, but they're not moving into uh, the actual checkout process. What uh, we always like to focus on, though, is, is much deeper engagement. So uh, in this particular case, the third row there is the number of people that viewed at least three products but did not move in to the actual cart or checkout process. So it's, it's really deep engagement when you look at the trends throughout the rest of the site. Um, and you can save a portion of these for sure uh, before they abandon. And so if we look at these numbers, right, like how, uh, what, what's the opportunity size here uh, of sales that you could save? There's 87,000 people per month that are, are super, super engaged uh, in the products, right? They're looking at three or more products, which in this client's case is a lot of engagement, especially the way that they have to navigate back and forth on the site. They don't make it very easy to look around. 87,000 people, um, they're converting 3.8% uh, of everyone. And so converting 2% of these is totally reasonable. Um, I, I think it's, it would be higher than 3.8%. We almost always see it like that, but it's not every single time. Um, but looking at this, being conservative here, right? Like a portion of site-wide conversion rate, um, converting 2% of these people turns into 1,700 uh, purchases, right? 1,749. Um, so definitely uh, a lot of sales. If you run the numbers on that, it's $66,000 a month, right? Um, so a ton of revenue by just tracking people um, engaged in the product process uh, or, or the product um, search, but not actually moving into checkout. So a ton of potential sales there. So we talked about, you know, chat in the checkout process and, you know, chat on the product pages, all those things. Um, but chat can also uh, supercharge your abandoned cart emails and, uh, and, and your other email flows. It's not, you know, just for your website. So I want to show you this because this is something like even if you're already using chat, um, if you get a takeaway like this and implement it into your cart abandonment emails, it will make those perform way, way, way better. Um, so. Cart abandonment. Most stores are using, like I mentioned earlier, a reminder email and then a discount email and then a Hail Mary discount, right? And maybe you're layering in SMS and all those things too, um, but you're basically reminding people, right, to buy. SMS is better because it's conversational, but there's some downsides to that too, depend depending on when you do it. Um, but using all of them together is great. The issue here though is people don't buy because of questions, right? There's something holding them back. They usually didn't like all of a sudden forget that they had something in their shopping cart, right? Like something held them back, wasn't super time sensitive for them to buy. Oh, I'll just come back later and deal with it, right? Um, so something stopped them from buying. What you can do is you can add live chat as a call to action in your emails so that basically when somebody gets those emails, rather than just seeing a reminder and discount, they see a call to action of, you know, hey, um, our team's online right now. Feel free to chat, you know, click here. They uh, come back to the site. The chat box is automatically open right when they arrive at the site. It's just a tagged link. Uh, and then it has all of their order information also in the page. That's normal abandoned cart uh, features, right? Um, but basically what you're doing here is you're making it so that it turns that email into a live conversation so that your team can then basically engage with them, continue that conversation, answer whatever questions, stop them from buying and get them to the point of converting. Um, you do need obviously a 24 seven team to do this since those emails are, are gonna go out at different times. Um, you can kind of technically get really fancy and, and, and make that call to action not appear during certain hours, but it's really messy to do and it doesn't work for everybody. But bottom line, adding live chat in as a call to action in your abandoned cart emails will, will significantly increase the performance of those emails. Um, so definitely something to consider um, those are really like the three major levers uh, of how live chat can drive a lot of sales. So using it in the checkout process, using it um, to invite people at the right time based on product engagement, um, and then also adding chat into cart recovery emails. Um, 
But if you're going to do live chat yourself, you absolutely should. Again, like you don't have to work with us to, to use live chat, obviously. Um, but if you're going to use live chat, it's super, super important um, to avoid a couple mistakes because live chat is something um, like if you get it wrong, it doesn't just not work. It causes your conversion rate to go down. Your conversion rate will be worse uh, with live chat if you make certain mistakes. And the reason for that is people that would have bought without chat, right? Like without it even being there, they will engage with chat. They'll see your greetings. They'll experience some of these mistakes I'm going to talk through, and it'll interrupt their purchase process and cause them not to buy. Um, so you got to be really, really careful with live chat because it, it can bring a source of friction into the purchase process and, and really mess things up. So. One of the main uh, mistakes we see people make is uh, using pre-chat forms. Don't use pre-chat forms. Don't require somebody to fill out information before they can speak with you. Um, that is just an added layer of friction. Like this is, you know, conversion optimization 101, um, decrease friction in the process, right? I know there's certain parts uh, of CRO where it makes sense to introduce friction, but this is not one of them. If somebody wants to ask a question, don't make them fill out paperwork uh, in order to, to speak to somebody, right? Um, that's one of the most important ones because people that have questions will, will uh, click the chat, see this form and then minimize it because they don't want to take the time to do the form. And that right there is just like, it's a micro interruption that affects the conversion rate. Second mistake, uh, and this one is, is uh, this one, I think they're both equally important. This is the harder one to solve though, frankly. Um, responding slowly. Response times are really, really important with live chat, especially if you get the greetings right, right? Like, like I talked about earlier, you time those greetings to when somebody is starting to have confusion on the site. Um, and if you get those greetings right, it's going to feel like the perfect time to the visitor. And they're going to assume that it's a human there uh, sending the invite. Ours are not humans, but it's humans. That's the second somebody replies. It should look human, though. Um, and they're going to reply. And then they're going to sit there. And they're going to wait for a response. And then they're going to realize it was automated. And then they're going to feel friction, which is not good. Um, the cutoff time is really 10 seconds. If you if you cross the 12 second mark for first response time, it really just crushes your conversion rate on that cohort of visitors um, that, inter, uh, that interact with chat. Um, because it's a real time channel. And when you get those greetings right, people expect a fast response because they feel like it's that perfect timing. So you got to be on point with your timing. Um, Response time during the conversation depends. 30 seconds is a good kind of round number, but it really depends on what's happening in the conversation. But that first response time is, is super, super critical. Last piece um, is nights and weekends, right? These other two things were kind of um, you know mistakes to avoid. I would say the third one is, is a mistake that's a missed opportunity. It's not, uh, it's not something that if you don't do it, it's gonna cause things to go backwards, right? Um, but it is a big missed opportunity. If you look at your traffic and revenue, you're going to see somewhere around 50% of your traffic and of your sales come outside of business hours, right? So nights and weekends, essentially, uh, or even just nights. Like we pretty often see 45, 50% of traffic and sales just on nights. Um, uh, so basically nighttime, seven days a week, right? Excluding the daytime on the weekends. So it's a lot of potential traffic and every visitor that you chat with, um, it's an opportunity to close those sales, right? And there's people abandoning on nights and weekends. And so if you get these chat things in place, you're able to drive a lot of those sales uh, on line nights and weekends. You can drive a lot of additional results there. Um, again, we, we run chat for a hundred plus stores. Um, and, and if you're doing over 50 K a month, digging into this stuff for your particular store and, and looking at 24 seven typically makes sense. Um, and to be transparent, like there's no big pitch or anything weird in our process. All we do on our, on our sales calls, uh, is basically what we just did in this presentation, but we do it with your data. So we look at your Google analytics. We look at your abandons on the payment page. We look at your abandons throughout the funnel and we explain, look, I think this is probably the best way to engage with these people based on the patterns that we're seeing in, in your data. And then we also look at, um, at uh, the best way to engage with them and uh, forecast what that'll turn into. And, and honestly, like we only work with clients where the ROI is gonna be a no brainer. We calculate that ROI right out of the gate. Super, super simple for us to do. So if you're doing over 50K a month, I'd, I'd be happy to jump on a strategy call with you and just go through your data and see if it makes sense. And, and even if we don't work together, you'll get a ton of insights because we, we get pretty nerdy with it on those calls. Um, so you'll see a lot of stuff that we've done with other stores throughout the years. So, um, you know, either way, it'll be a lot of value, but, um, for anybody on the call, we put together the helpflow.net, um, or the, I was reading the URL, sorry, the cart recovery checklist. Um, this is basically a resource that goes into 
really like why visitors abandon, right? Like we've done literally millions of chats. And so we've been able, and we use that data on the back end a lot. So we're able to see like why visitors abandon, like what are the things that lead to people abandoning um, and how to predict those abandons and engage with them on the site like we've done today, but in more detail and, and also how to integrate chat into your email. So it's basically a guide to really execute on what we talked about today. And it just goes into more detail. It's something you can circulate to your team um, so that they're able to implement that stuff. Um, but that's definitely a resource I wanted to share. I know Derek and the team are, are sharing that in the emails and uh, you know other places related to the event, but feel free to download that cart recovery checklist. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out, reply to that email, contact us on Helpflow, uh, helpflow.com or helpflow.net, either one, um, and uh, chat with our team there because we, we use live chat as well. Um, but that is basically everything I've got. I know there's uh, there may be some questions um, within uh within the comments i'm happy to go into chloe if uh if that works for you or we can uh we can keep things moving i know well one of the questions we got in the comments and john that was brilliant as always um so clear such great advice so uh so thank you for pulling it all together and such great examples um, examples as well we've got um a question which isn't terribly about what you said but i think we're gonna we're gonna um mustafa is clearly really needing to know the answer to this one so i think we'll answer it which is what's the domain name of the store thrive uh do, 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 do. let me check i would just google it it's uh google it from the name thrive cosmetics i think cosmetics. yeah thrive cosmetics.com cosmetics <laughs> is spelled like cause uh i'll paste it in the in the comments here Excellent. Thanks, John. A nice, easy question for you there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And to be clear, that's not a client. So I just wanted to be crystal clear about that part. That's cool. Um, and for, oh, and such an amazing checklist as well. Is there, is there one last thought you'd like to leave everyone with before we, before we say goodbye? Honestly, I, th I think the biggest one is um, everyone focus on, everyone focuses on cart recovery and getting people back to the site after they abandon with the data that's in analytics and like watching people on the site and engaging with people, you can, it sounds like rocket science, but you can predict if somebody's going to abandon and then just be there before they leave. Just like brick and mortar retail, if somebody walks confused up and down an aisle, <laughs> you can predict that they're confused, right? And help them. Um, that's all you're trying to do online. So um, yeah, I would say that's the biggest thing is don't just focus on cart recovery, focus on helping people when they're on your site. And you know, I'm biased, but chat is the best way to do that. Excellent. And oh, Mustafa says thank you. So that's gone down well. Excellent. Awesome. Happy to help. And uh, how can people get hold of you if uh, if they want to as a result of what they've heard today? Yeah, best option is is just visiting helpflow.net. Um, you can download the guide also. That goes straight to my email as well. So I do engage with people there. Um, but yeah, helpflow.net, contacting us through the site. Um, that's the best way to reach out. Excellent. Well, I better let you go and deal with all those emails you're about to get from people downloading the checklist, so. hadn't I? <laughs> John, thanks very much. Always a pleasure to catch up. Um, enjoy the rest of your Wednesday. Thank you so much, Chloe. Take care. Cheers. Bye. Well, everybody, that has given you a whole load of areas to bring together for your uh, for your business and for for your for the future of your e-commerce tech. We just heard from our three key sponsors. So we who I'm going to tell you a bit, bit more about them now because as as Derek mentioned at the very beginning, without these guys, the event couldn't happen. We couldn't put it on for free. So we've had Gorgeous, who are the help desk for e-commerce. We've had Helpflow, who provide 24-7 live chat teams for over 100 stores. And we've had Recart, who are best in class messenger marketing. Hopefully, you have accessed and got up on your screens right now our... Um, where have they gone? Our show notes, because that is, I've just got it scrolling across the bottom of the screen now, because that is the number one link you need, as well as this one where you're actually watching us, because um, Derek's got one of his team doing notes live for you. They're adding all the important links, all the important details. So that is, is the number one place you need to grab and bookmark as we go through all this.